Hello and welcome in RCF with the part 4 of the video tutorial about the new release of RDNet 3.0. We'll talk about the advanced functions to control and tune the systems. Let's start by loading our project and go online. All the devices are on without any alert message. Select a speaker or many speakers and click Properties in the toolbar. This window allows to select in a simple way all object presets. For instance, to set the cluster size of an entire speaker array, let's select all the modules of the arrays and set the proper preset. The preset load command imports from the RCF Shape Designer software the correct preset used to automatically set HF correction, different for each speaker, according to the air temperature and humidity, and cluster size setting that will be the same for all the speakers. To do it, let's move for one minute to RCF Shape Designer software to create the proper presets for RDNet and to see the mechanical data of the system. Open the Shape Designer software and input the data for our system that will be Starting coverage 8 meter Ending coverage 80 meter Number of modules, in this case 8 Eight of the fly bar, in our case 9 meter And number of pickup points, 1 So input 20 degrees Celsius with 40% of humidity Click Autosplay. You can see the angles and the pickup point, and these are the presets that we have to export to RDNet. Go in the Export menu and save the file in a proper location. Come back to RDNet, and after selecting all the devices of the cluster, go in the Properties windows and load the file previously saved from Shape Designer. As you can see, all the modules have their own and sometimes different HF correction. Instead, they will share the same cluster size. This operation must be done one cluster at a time. In the specific case of all the RCF line array system, when selecting all cluster objects, all changes in the HF are progressive in order to maintain the preset scalarity among objects, but still keeping the possibility to edit globally to get customized correction according to the needs of the sound engineer. Note that in the properties windows, the simultaneous selection of different objects restricts the available controls only to those common among all the selected devices. For instance, if I select an HDL50A and the sub-9007, in the properties windows only the mute command is available. Now the cluster have the proper HF and cluster size preset. We can move to the next step to manage the system. Now we can group the devices in order to share all the DSP controls. All devices belonging to a group share the same values of gain, polarity, delay and equalization and also can be muted and unmuted altogether. All changes are simultaneously sent to the DSP of all the devices belonging to the same group. Each single object can belong to a group only, which can be identified by a unique color. To group our cluster, let's select all the modules and right-click with the mouse. Select Assign to Group in the menu and choose to which available group or selected object will be assigned. In this case, let's select the group A. Now, to open the equalizer windows, right-click the object belonging to a group and select Show Group Details or simply click in the EQ button of any modules belonging to the group. As you can see, we can share for all the modules the equalization, gain, delay and phase. Each group can be named by opening the group windows and it is also possible to change its color. 
The group function is really helpful on several occasions, for example, to manage system parts, delay lines, that need to be set differently. In case of working with line array clusters, like in our example, we can use a different kind of group that is available in this new release of RDNet. We can assign our modules to an array that is exactly like assigning it to a group, but with another function available. Indeed, the grouping function array represents an advanced group. It has all the same characteristic of a group, adding five zones with their own fear phase gain properties. To create an array, you must select the object that you want to regroup on it. Then, by using the right mouse button, select Assign to Array and then choose the number of the array from 1 to 9 and the number of the zone from 1 to 5. For now, let's keep the zone 1 for all the modules of the array. By pressing the EQ button of an object belonging to an array, you assess the details view of the array as in the group we saw before. The difference between a group and an array is only this, that every array can be divided also into five different zones. These zones are characterized by a three fear phase gain values, which for each zone can be different. On top left, there is the zones list. For each zone, you can see how many objects it contains, and by selecting each zone, you select the fear phase gains related block. They are set in three different bands that are from 1K to 4K, to 4K to 10K, and from 10K to the limit of the system. This represents the fear phase gain assigned to each object of the zone. To modify the values, you have to write inside the block under the list, otherwise you can also move the points inside the graphic on the right side. Of course, all the zones will share the user EQ as the groups, but they can different settings in the FIR blocks. This advanced function has been developed in order to change the HF sound according with the shape of the array. Let's see our project in a Focus 3 simulation. Look at the first three modules. They are aimed in the far field and the angles among them are very small. From the module number 4 to the number 6, we are aimed in the midfield with the higher values in the angles. The last two modules are aimed in the near field and the angles between them is bigger. This means that the coupling of the mid HF, in which the array modules work the waveguide and the sound beam is really narrow, will be higher in the far field because the shape of the arrays is almost straight. In the midfield and in the near field, where the shape of the array is more curved, the coupling of the HF will be different, for sure lower, and will give to the HF sound different colors. We can manage the gain of these blocks, zone by zone, in order to give to the HF the same sound color, and being these FIR filters, we can do all this work without affecting the phase behavior of the array. So, come back to RDNet and let's divide our cluster in three zones as we have seen in the Focus 3 simulation. Right-click after selecting the first three modules of both the arrays and assign them to Array 1, Zone 1. The following three modules in the Array 1, Zone 2 and the last two modules in the Array 1, Zone 3. Now, by placing three microphones and taking the magnitude in three different locations, we can manage the FIR bands in order to reach the same HF curve in the near field, in the mid field and in the far field. If you are setting also a user equalization for some reason, you can add to graph result clicking Add Fear Phase Gain to the graphic, generating the sum of all the filters applied to the array. We can say that this way to tune the system is divided in three different levels. 
The first level, with FIR filters, is the HF correction using the 15 preset available, and the low frequency control using the cluster size presets. The second level is using the FIR bands of the different zones to fine-tune the sound of the HF. Normally, working with the first and second level, we reach the proper tuning in most situations. If the sound engineer or if there will be other issues, we can use also the EQ with its 8 band of parametric equalizer, also with shelving, low pass and high pass filter. In the next part of the series of these video tutorials, we'll talk about the subwoofer configuration and master functions to finish the setup of the system. Thank you for viewing. Bye-bye.